In this final video on programming basics, we look at random number generation. So there's a number of situations in computer programming where you might want to generate a random number. And there's a few examples on the screen now. So in order to look at this, we're going to provide you a practical example of a program that uses a random number. And we've popped that program on the screen here. So first, we're going to import the random library of functions. So in Python, that's import random. We then generate three random numbers between one and six and assign each number to a different variable. In this case, dice one, dice two and dice three. You're now free to use those numbers as you see fit in the rest of the program. Now, there are different ways of generating random numbers in different languages. And depending on the language you're studying, you'll need to make sure you know that. So we've got some examples on the screen here of how you generate random numbers in Python, Visual Basic, C Sharp and Java. And it's worth noting that in some of these languages, there are multiple or different ways of generating random numbers. So we've just shown you here a, a typical way of generating a random number in each of those languages. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are typical uses of random number generation programs? And how can random numbers be generated? That's what you need to know for the exam. But if you want to know a little bit more about how random numbers are truly being generated by a deterministic machine, stay listening to Beyond the Spec section. So you may be wondering if a computer can actually generate a truly random number. By nature, computers are deterministic. They work off algorithms which are simply pieces of computer code. If a number is generated using a set algorithm, how random can it truly be? On the other hand, is it possible to predict a sequence of so-called random numbers generated by a computer? Well, for most situations, generating pseudo-random numbers is enough. Running the program below does appear to generate a random list of 10 numbers between 1 and 100. However, if we ran the program multiple times, it would generate the same sequence of numbers every time. Pseudo random number generators need to be supplied with what we call a seed value, a value that changes every time the algorithm is run. This value is taken in by the algorithm and used in the calculation to alter the list of random numbers produced. One example would be to use the value of the Unix epochs time each time the function is called. The Unix epochs is the number of seconds that have elapsed since January the 1st, 1970 at midnight GMT, not counting leap seconds. At the precise moment of writing this sentence, the Unix epoch time was as shown on the screen now. We use the code below to generate a sequence of 10 random numbers between 1 and 100. But at the precise moment we call random, the seed value is passed in. Then we run the program again, but this time it obviously uses a different seed value. So this time the program outputs a different set of 10 random numbers. Generating pseudo random numbers is fine in most cases. For things like cryptography, we need to generate true random numbers. Now, true random number generators gather what we call entropy, seemingly random data from the physical world around them. For example, the computer could measure the radioactive decay of an atom. Linux's random number generator won't return a random number until it gathers enough entropy to return a truly random number. We can see here a screenshot of a process in Linux where we're generating a cryptographic key and it's asking the user to perform random actions such as typing on the keyboard and moving the mouse. 
And it's recording those actions to generate a truly random sequence. As you can see, generating random numbers for computers is actually quite a complex task. Thank you.